present, it is real, it is killing, it is infecting people day and night. So ensure that your mask is on and should be properly worn by you. Okay? Maintain short distance always when you're at home there. Always remember to wash your hands with the clean water and soap. Or if not, you can sanitize when necessary. Is that okay? So, children, you see when life is gone, there is no way of it coming back again. When you are gone, you are gone. So we hope the parents at home there, they are doing a very wonderful job. They are sincerely going with the same thing that we always talk about here with you at home. So they are keeping you safe. That's why they do advise us and you that please stay home, stay safe. I hope you are very safe. So we are back today being a Monday as a mission, the 7th December 2000. 20. Last time when we met, it was November. We we're just ending that month of November, which had Saturdays. So I have now moved to December, the last month of the year. That I know my primary four children, primary five children, and primary six children. They are set to go and they are ready for the lesson. Okay? So inform your neighbor, please wear a mask and move a bit four meters from where I am and you get ready for the lay. For a lesson, it is a mathematics lesson for those ones who are in primary four, primary five, and primary six. Okay? So, this subject is very simple. As you always eh, hear about it, as even your teachers always tell you, eh, whatever you meet them, they tell her, please, practice mathematics. You see, it's a practical subject. If you don't practice, there is no way you'll understand. I'm assuring you very well. So, learners, I hope you are organized. You are set for us to start. Last time when we met, we talked a lot. We talked about fractions. Deep. We said the fraction, first of all, is a part of a whole number. Or a fraction is a piece of a whole. Is that okay? We said no. We should also know what is called eh? naming the types of fractions. Naming fractions. Naming fra fractions. We said there are very many. One was the proper fraction where you find the numerator is smaller than the denominator or the numerator is less than the denominator okay? okay for example three out of seven four out of twenty those are all some of the examples of proper fra fractions we also said no we should talk about improper which was the opposite of who? proper so with the improper you find the numerator is bigger than the denominator okay so when talk about, for example, three out of seven, which was the numerator and which was the denominator? So if I that this three is the numerator and the seven is the denominator, the bottom number, denominator, deno, denominator. Okay? So you should be in position to know, to differentiate what we call the numerator and the denominator. Okay? We also said, no, we should talk about two mixed fractions with the mixed fractions they have a whole number and a proper fraction they don't have a whole number and a fraction but they have a whole number and a proper fraction should be proper not improper for example four whole number three out of nine this one is an example of a mixed fraction the whole number here is four then a proper fraction is here three out of nine or would call three divided by nine so this is what we call a mixed fra fraction plus also we said no we should talk about equivalent fractions with equivalent fractions these are two or more fractions which give you the same value eh? when sincerely you have to reduce them but they are always written using different numerators and denominators there are two or more fractions which give you the same or the equal value. The same value. But the numerators, their numerators and the denominators are written differently. Yeah, that's what we call equivalent fractions. So we talked a lot addition, reducing fractions, arranging fractions, and so on. Is that okay? 
So today we are embarking on something which is very vital again. We are just see, doing our previous discussions. What I covered with the others of primary seven, some time back, I could cover with them a lot. So the same story to you also. So be ready for the lesson now. So today let's talk about first of all what we call lengths. People should know what's called lengths, comma mass, and capacity. Lengths, mass, and what? And capacity. Hey, I know it's a very organized topic that most children now just smile when they're outside there yeah. to see what I've written on the chalk on the chalkboard. That is very, is very, very, very what? Vital. So when I talk about lengths, mass, and capacity, what do you think is there? Very simple things are there. Very cheap, cheap things are there. Example, how to change kilometers to meters. You see? How to change kilograms to grams. And vice versa. Then also liters. Let's talk about capacity. Capacity talks about liters. Eh? Milliliters, liters, those things there. Then now the mass. Hmm? You know, always with the mass in science. Hey. So even as here, we have mass. And that one now we shall talk about the kilograms and the grams, the hectograms and others. Then now lengths. Ah, la, la, this one. Eh? What is the length from here? Maybe for example up to eh? you just measure one step. Then you get the length, the distance there between those two points. Is that okay? okay. Hey. So that one also we are going to talk about the kilometers. That's why you find the meters, the centimeters there, the millimeters and so on. Is that okay? Now and the length, mass, and capacity. We have some work that we want to pass through those three things. First and foremost, let's first start with call. How to change, or how to express, or how to convert, how to write centimeters as centimeters, centimeters. How do we change from meters to centimeters? Eh? First of all, you should first know these things called kilometers, hectometers, decameters, decimeters, centimeters. Uh -huh. We can first talk about meters before we go to the other one. So, to be organized, we have here centimeters. We can talk about meters first. Then now you go in an organized arrangement. So, let's talk about meters, decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters. That order is the one I want to write there, which is general. So when you start this one, it's very vital. What is it? The kilometer starting. And that was the biggest, by the way. That's the biggest. You go to hectometers. You go to decameters. Deca with a capital D. You go to meters. You go to decimeters. This one is smaller D, decimeters. You go to centimeters and millimeters. I have written them in the order. I wanted to write them in the order like that. Other than me disorganizing. That's why I have put them like that. In order. And they are in order. So before we proceed, let's first break for a short commercial break. And we shall be back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Yeah. Welcome back from that short commercial break. You are tuned into Delta TV. It's time to to move on with the, our mathematics lesson at Delta TV here. For those ones who are of primary four, primary five, and primary six, I hope you have started enjoying the, le the lesson as it has just begun, it has just started. So before we went for a break, we said, no, we should learn how to first change the three meters as the centimeters. Now, before you start showing whatever you want, first of all, you should first know this, put this, in your brain that eh? we have kilometers, hectometers, decameters, meters, decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters. I hope teachers outside there gave you a lot about them. So for you to recall, to remember it faster, it's just kilometer. Oh, you can instead of saying kilometers, just say King Henry's daughter Mary drank a cold milk. Very simple. For you to understand. King Henry's daughter Mary drank a cold milk. That is the easiest way of recalling kilometers up to milli millimeters. You just say King Henry's daughter Mary drank a cold milk. <coughs> I hope you have heard that very well. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what I'm supposed to do here. 
That's what supposed to do there. You recall faster. So <coughs> when you are changing from bigger units to smaller units, what are supposed to do? We just multiply. Bring their multiplication sign. Multiplying by what? We are going to see. So if I change, for example, from meters here to centimeters, <coughs> what are you going to do? First of all, put your one. Then you count the zeros up to centimeters. How many zeros will you get? Only two zeros. Which means <coughs> that one meter is the same as saying 100 say, centimeters. So I hope teachers outside there told that please one meter has got 100 centimeters. Let no person cheat you <coughs> that we have 1,000. No, it is 100 centimeters makes one meter. Is that okay? So if one meter alone has given you 100 centimeters, what about these three meters? What about the three meters? How many now? It's just a matter of multiplying. That's what I told you. When you're changing from bigger units to smaller units with the lengths, you just multiply. Is that okay? So, if one meter has got 100 centimeters now, therefore, this three meters will now be three times 100 centimeters. You multiply the three meters by 100 centimeters. That we have in one meter. Is that okay? Yes. So, three meters now, finally, it will now give us how many centimeters? Three times 100. First of all, just multiply what three times one will give you three then just bring those two zeros to make what 300 300 say, centimeters now if again you put your answer that is 300 full stop then you are wrong again again you are wrong <laughs> I tell you, again you are wrong she don't just say that the other is 300 300 what 300 shillings 300 mangoes 300 monkeys oh what so we are in lengths and you know the lengths, they go with the units. You see, with the mathematics, why you are supposed to put a unit? Put it. Don't refuse to put. If you don't put it, it's already wrong. <laughs> yes, because the unit was given the question, and for you, you have left not to put it. At the end, you are wrong. And for me, I call it fake. Because it's fake. <laughs> it's not correct. So remember units where necessary, always in, ma in mathematics. I hope you are not there. Yeah. So if you should just say 3 meters equals 300. 300 what? It should be 300 centimeters. Not 300. So go with units. Okay? Good. So when you are converting from bigger units, from larger, from larger units, from left to right, this way, you have to multiply. But what if, if you are converting from smaller units to bigger units? What do you do with the lengths? You just divide. You just divide. So you should know varieties of units. Meters, centimeters, decimeters, millimeters, decameters, hectometers, and kilometers. All those ones should be aware. And you should have in their brain. When you are talking about lengths. So let's talk about the second example. Which is talking about express. How do you now convert? Let's see the opposite. Hey, the opposite of that. Express 450 centimeters as meters. As what? As meters. How do you convert? How do you change? How do you write? How do you express eh? the 450 centimeters as meters? <laughs> hey, now that now from from smaller units to bigger units. Hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hey, because the teacher told her father, please, if you have to convert from bigger units to smaller, that you multiply. Now, here they have given us what to call smaller units now to bigger. What are you going to do? So here simply you just divide. You just do what? You just bring your division faster. So but before you bring that, first recall this word called King Henry's daughter Mary. King Henry's daughter Mary drank called milk. That's what called kilometers, hectometers, decameters, meters, decimeters, centimeters, and milli, millimeters. Yes, you should know this first. King Henry's daughter Mary drank called milk faster. 
I hope if it's your first time to hear that, <laughs> it is now very, it's not the sweetest. And you should just smile from there that eh, the teacher has given me the easiest way of recalling these things faster. Yes. Because honestly, if you don't know this, it is one way how you can get to know what you're supposed to know. Is that okay? Yes. So, if you are converting from smaller units, that's now centimeters back to meters, what are you going to do? Hmm? What are you going to do? Here, you are converting from meters to centimeters, and we're saying we're multiplying. Now here, what are you going to do? So, you find out here that the 100 centimeters, because they've given us the centimeters. We have to begin with what do you know. Always, when you, when you are doing things, start from what you call known to unknown. Is that okay? From what you know to what you don't know. But now when you start from what you don't know to what you know, what does it mean? It means nothing. It is meaningless. So you have to start from what you know equals what you don't know. Because you are finding what you don't know. What you know should be known first. So 100 centimeters, it will give you one meter. Hey! That's what I gave in the first statement, the first question there. So 100 centimeters gives you one meter. Yes. So if 100 centimeters gives us one meter, and here when you are changing from smaller units now to bigger units, what do you do? We are going to divide, to divide them. Okay? So 100 centimeters gives us one meter. What if now I ask you, what about one meter? It will give us what now? One divided by 100. All this will be say will be meters. All this now will be meters. From here, there are centimeters. The other side, meters. Is that okay? Left, centimeters. Right, meters. Is that okay? So if one centimeter gives you one out of 100 meters, what about this 450 centimeters? What are you going to get? It will be one out of 100, then times you are 450. All of this will change to become meters. Is that okay? So now I'm saying you are going to divide. You did, in short, just divide the given centimeters by 100 centimeters that we have in one meter. Is that okay? So you simply divide. You just simply do what? Divide. Division should take place. So 450 centimeters equals. So what is the one time is the 450? It will give 450 divided by 100. All these are what? Are meters. You are changing from centimeters to meters. They become what you call meters. Not again, say, centimeters. Yes. So you should know. So now here, you see, we have very many ways of getting the answer here. Whatever answer you get, provided yes, is matching with the question, moves on well. The teacher will just say, yes, thank you very much. Right mode from the other side of Kengera, yes. Or they can say, yes. Eh? Then is it from the other side of Kitende, yes. So that's what you're supposed to do. So provided the answer is right, now here, on my side, me even advise you to reduce, if you find the zeros are up and even down, the numerators, the zeros are there. The numerators are there with the zeros. You just reduce the zeros. First, remove these two zeros, divide that zero and that zero goes. The balance will now be 45 out of 10. These are all what? Meters. Now, there you can now go with any. This now would call improper fraction. Change to become mixed. It works. As a decimal, it works. So, mixed fraction and a decimal now is going to work there. So, 45 out of 10 as a decimal. Only one decimal place once. So this one becomes 4.5 meters as your answer. Or oh, 45 out of 10. These are meters. You will now just change as a mixed fraction. What is 45 divided by 10? If you have your 45 mangoes and you are 10 boys, how many mangoes do you expect each boy to get? Each boy will get 4, 4, 4. And the remainder will be 5. Yes. So in short, four whole number as a mixed fraction, five the remainder becomes a numerator, divided by ten the denominator, these are all of meters. Or you can reduce five out of ten to give you to give you four point five. Four point what? Five, the other one. Or four and a half. Four and what? 
four and a half. This five out of ten, when reduced, gives you a half. So the same as saying four whole number, one out of two meters, or four, then five out of ten meters, or 4.5, 4.5, this one's as a decimal. Then this one as a mixed fraction. So that's what supposed to do when you are changing from smaller units to bigger units. You what I gonna do? You just divide by 100 centimeters. If you are talking about meters and say centimeters. Now, if you are converting from kilometers to meters, it will be 1,000. If you are converting from kilometers to centimeters, it will be 100,000 say centimeters to give you one kilometer. So all of those. So I've just given you these first numbers here, or these two examples, to first give you clue about le lengths. Now with the lengths, when you are changing from bigger units to smaller, you just see, multiply. When you are changing from smaller units to bigger units, that's when we shall de divide. As simple as that. What is it hard there? There's nothing hard. When you say mathematics is hard, I'm not understanding. It is you who doesn't want to become practical enough to know the subject. The subject was not meant to disturb you. It, it's you to disturb the subject and show that, please, you are below me. Then you show the subject what to do. Then every day you keep on complaining, sir. Mathematics is disturbing me. How? How is it disturbing you? You are the one who's disturbing the subject. Then you say that the subject is disturbing you. <laughs> so correct that mistake. Correct that error there. Yeah. So, know what I'm supposed to do there. So, that's concerning what you call what? Lengths, first of all. Now, let's talk about mass also. Mass. Eh? Let's talk about ma mass. Let's talk about how to write. This is the third example. The third example. How to write our, how to write our what? Our five kilograms to grams. Five kilograms in grams or to grams hey. how do you convert how do you convert how do you change how do you write how do you express kilograms to grams kilograms in grams <laughs> even here the same story we have to bring this kilograms hey, hectograms decagrams grams centigrams milligrams okay all those ones hmm? Next, we can first bring this because I want to be in order. Grams, decigrams, centigrams, and a milligrams, milligrams. Hey. In order, I want to go in order so I don't get lost. I want to be organized so that for you, you also become all organized. That is the order I want to follow. Kilograms, hectograms, decagrams, grams, decigrams, centigrams, and milligrams. Hey, in order. So when you are converting, again here you are converting from bigger units, that's from kilograms to grams. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Tell me. I know you are now happy there. You are raising up the hand, but yes, tell me. What are you going to do? Uh huh. So here, we are going to first say, one kilogram, first of all, how many grams are there? How many grams make up one kilogram? It will be, oh, there will be 1,000, there will be 1,000 eh, grams. Can you see? Three zeros, put your one. One for hectograms, two for decagrams, three for grams. So one kilogram has got 1,000 grams. When you always go to the... Butcher show, you say, ah, ah, please, hold the shopkeeper. And you say, please, seller, <laughs> I need the one kilogram of sugar. So when a man uses a weighing scale, there's that stone that is going to put, that they have put there 1,000 grams. So 1,000 grams, it is the same as saying one kilo, kilogram. Don't allow the seller or the shopkeeper to cheat you when you go to the shop or in the market. <laughs> Be careful or when you go to the farm. So you should also know what's called kilograms, grams, all those things. Always when you children, they are, you are being sent to nearby shops to buy items, to buy, for example, maybe posho, sugar, rice. Then you go and disorganize. The seller sells you. You should also have mathematics there. I say, no, hello, the stone you have put is not the one I want. Please, can you do correction there? 
What do you want? I need a kilo. And you put a gram of 250. So, <laughs> so you are the one to be alert. Otherwise, the seller will cheat you. <laughs> so, in short, one kilogram has got 1,000 grams. See? Okay? Yeah. So, if one kilogram has got 1,000 grams, what if I give you 5 kilograms? 5 kilograms will give us, see? 5 must be multiplied by 1,000. All these are supposed to be grams. Because you are converting to grams, even though, though, though I need P4, primary 5 or primary 6, without the unit, please, the teacher will not give you a mark. I'm assuring you now. So if you used to leave units today, you should just say, eh, eh, eh. I used to ignore units. I used to leave the units. Moreover, I was supposed to put, but they're not put. Now, what am I supposed to do? Remember now to be putting them where you're supposed to put. Not every question in mathematics goes with a unit, no? There are those numbers which have units. There are those ones without units. So you should be aware. Yeah. Hey. So 5 kilograms now, we are going to multiply 5 times 1,000 grams, which will give us 5,000 grams. Not 5,000, but 5,000 grams. 5,000 what? 5,000 grams. 5,000 grams. Not 5,000. Yeah. Hey. You will say 5,000. 5,000, wrong. 5,000 what? Books. Eh? Rubbers. <laughs> Markers. <laughs> so, you have to put the unit. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, do that. Follow that. Ah, yeah. That's when the teacher will just smile with you when he's marking or when she's marking your book. Okay. So, that's what you're supposed to do. Also, when you're changing what you call the, the gram or the kilograms to grams. So let's talk about also how you can change what called the liters. Eh? The liters, for example, express, change, convert. Uh -huh, maybe, for example, seven liters, seven liters to milliliters. Seven liters to milliliters. This MR means milli, milliliters, milliliters, milliliters. Milliliters, M I L L I, then liters follow. So, milli, milliliters, milliliters. How do you convert? Hey, we're not in capacity. Hey, in liters. How do you express seven liters to milliliters? You always buy milk, you always, you always buy petrol, or they call paraffin, kerosene, all those ones from the petrol stations. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we are now, yeah, we are now in petrol stations, yes. Buying what? Buying kerosene, buying paraffin. Yeah. All those are fuels. Now, how do you always convert? I know teachers did a lot of work, and I thank the teachers so much. Thank you very much, teachers, what you are doing outside there with the children, always when they are at school with you. Or even when you pass by and you find a child there doing his or her work, you may even just... Hmm? Operate distance there. Help him or her. Say them, please. No, when liters, even liters, what next is to convert the liters to milliliters. How do you convert always liters to milliliters? Uh -huh. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, in a short, here, one liter, eh? one liter has got 1,000 milliliters. One liter has got 1,000 milli, milliliters. 1,000 milliliters gives you one liter. Hey, 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. Now, if one liter has got 1,000 milliliters, now, tell me about this seven. What about seven? What will you tell me? Will you tell me stories? Or you will work out the number? Tell me. Will you tell me stories? Or you are going to work out the number? I don't know. Okay, you tell me. Me also don't know. <laughs> what are you going to do? Okay. So the teacher said that always when I change from bigger units to smaller, that we multiply. Yes, that is it. That's what I'm going to do. So if one liter gives us 1,000 milliliters, therefore now our seven liters, our seven liters will give us now seven times 1,000. Just multiply the seven liters by 1,000 milliliters. That we have in one li, in one liter. So 7 liters, if you have to multiply 7 by 1,000, what do you get? Simple, simple mathematics, yes? Even children from P1 can just multiply for us faster. 
Yes? What is the answer? Okay, 7,000. Good. 7,000. 7,000 what? We put there 7,000 dogs. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to put. 7,000 what? We underline. Wrong. So remember the unit. Remember the unit. So it should be 7,000 milliliters. 7,000 milliliters. So that's what I'm supposed to do. Remember to put the, the unit. Remember to put the what? The unit. So when you're always changing from bigger units to smaller, you multiply. But when you're changing from smaller units to bigger units, you divide. Is that okay? That's supposed to do with the length, mass, and capacity. And they go with the units. So before we proceed, let's first go for a short commercial break and we shall be back. Don't go away. Stay tuned to Delta TV. It's time to submit. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back from that short commercial break. You are still tuned to Delta TV. It's still our to some program here running with the I, your host, your mathematics teacher. For those ones of primary four, primary five, and primary six, I hope you are enjoying the lesson. So before we went for a break, we said no. Let's talk about these liters and the milliliters. So always when you are converting, that's what I want you to put in your brain. Please be. A good listener. That's what I always tell children. That please be attentive and listen. If you become a good listener, which means everything moves on well. If you're a good listener, everything is perfect. Just tune the ears and the eyes very well. That is all what I demand only from children. First, before other things come in. Is that okay? So when you're converting from always. Bigger units to smaller units, you have to multiply. But when you are converting from smaller units to bigger units or to larger units, what do you do? You just divide. Is that okay? Yes. Now, we are now here, still liters going on. Now, here they are asking us that the next question that how many half liter cups? The key word here is the word half liter cups. Hey, hey, yeah. Half liter cups. Half liter cups. How many half liter bottles, half liter cups? Provided they have put a word half liter. Okay? So, how many can you get or uh, can be obtained in a five liter jerry can? You know, a five liter jerry can having five liters inside. When you pour there water, even pour there paraffin, whatever you want to put, put there, or even sand, provided it is carrying five liters. So, that one, for example, if you talk about the jerry can, it's a jerry can of five liters that I expect a girl or a boy of six years and above maybe to carry, even using one hand, okay? <laughs> so, how many half liter cups can you get in a five liter jerry can? But when I told her the teachers did a lot of work. That's why I appreciate them, I like them. God bless you, please, teachers outside there. Eh? You are really teachers. You can teach children and make them understand. The way sometimes they. The reason that's why I mentioned such because when they send, when you give them work and they send you the work, they can organize for the work. But sometimes also there are those who are who make just a mind. I don't know how to even to call. They instead of putting a unit, a child comes very well with the working, but there is no unit. And yet they're supposed to put the unit. It is wrong. <laughs> if you get like me, I'll just mark you wrong. I mark your book wrong or the paper. The work will be marked wrong. Why? There was no unit. And yet you're supposed to put. So, to know the number of the half liter cups that can be obtained in a five liter jerry can, we have very many workings. The first one, I can first draw my circle there. Even though you say that that is the oval shape, but it's a circle. Now, I divide in the middle, I get a half. At first, it was one hole. So, this one is the, eh, a half. Even this one is a half. So, I can go this one is one liter. I draw again another one for the second liter. Another one, the third. Another one, the fourth. Another one, the fifth. So I divide the middle. Eh? I divide the middle to get what? To get my two halves. So eh, these ones are half. Even these ones are half. Eh, these ones are half. Even these ones are half. Even though I divide like this, still is a half. This one also is a half. Eh, a half. Even these ones are half. You see? So now if these are liters, this was the first liter, the second liter. The third liter, the fourth liter, and the fifth liter. So these are five liters mine. <laughs> See, I'm giving you my eh, organized working there, the first one. I'm going to give you two. So 
you find that in one liter we have there are two half liters is that okay so you just now count and add them hmm? that this one liter the number of the halves there there are two here there are two here there are two there there are two there there are two there you just add eh? just add them so these are all the half liters these are all the half liters so when you add two eh? two plus two Plus again, two plus two plus two. What do you get? Even a child in just I don't know whether maybe nursery section, top class. Can't tell the answer that it's supposed to be ten. So ten what? Ten half liter. Ten half liter cups. Ten half liter cups. Check that working. So in a short, using the another working. In a short, using the second one of saying that one liter first of all has go to how many half liters are there? How many half liters sincerely can you get in, in a five liter jerry can? That jerry can of five liters. How many halves are there? So you find that there are ten half liter cups. Oh, one liter. You should know that it has got two half liters. Two half liters. Two half liters. So one liter alone. Hey, you today you can get you just call that. Big bottle of, for example, of soda. The one they sell at maybe at 4,500 shillings. I see 5,000. It depends on those shopkeepers. You see, they have their different prices. So, that one has got one liter. You forgive I because I've not carried it. But I wish if I had carried it, I would have shown you very well. So, one liter has got two half liters. So, what if I give you five liters? Five what? Five liters. How many halves are there? You just multiply five times two halves. So five must be multiplied by two. All these are supposed to be half liters. Half liters. Half what? Eh? Half liters. So five liters. Five liters of maybe water or whatever they have given you will give you ten half liters. Ten half liters. Ten half liters. You know they're saying a half. A half is one out of two. The total number is just by going to look at the denominator of that fraction. That's why last time I taught you fractions. Because I knew that we are going to talk about again fractions here. So, so five liters gives you ten half liters. So, those are two workings. You draw. You are five cups. Each cup having one liter. Eh? First of all, each cup is for one liter. But now you get there, the halves which are there. So in a liter, you have two half liters. In a liter. What if they ask you about a quarter? They will ask you about how many quarter liter bottles of maybe soda are contained in a 10 liter beer can. You see? Are you hearing those questions? So they are saying a quarter. A quarter is one out of four. So in short, one liter must have, it is a must, no, no deduction there. No say that effect. One liter has got four half liter bottles. If they are talking about bottles. If they are talking about cups, four half liter cups are in a liter. What if you are talking about a third? Hmm? How many third liter cups can be got in that six liter jerry can? So one liter has got three. You just look at the denominator of that fraction. Just look at the fraction and write it in figures. Then you look at the denominator. Go to the denominator. The denominator tells you the number which are in one liter. Just got the denominator full stop. That's where the answer is located. So even me, I just want the denominator of a half, which is the two. <laughs> I call it two. If you never give you a third, one of three, it is a three. Oh, there are three. They give you four. A quarter, one of four. There are four. Go the denominator faster. So that's what you're supposed to do. So that's concerning all that are the prepared about to length, mass, and capacity. Is that okay? That is, even those people of primary three, even they have picked. Now, you the one of primary four, primary five, and primary six, which means now you have picked more. You have picked a lot. Is that okay? And we're still going. So, that is all concerning length, mass, and capacity. Now, let's now talk about something good again. What is it? Algebra. Yes, I know some of you are smiling there now. Algebra. Algebra. Very cheap. Very simple. Topic again. Algebra. Don't joke about it. You know you have clapped their hands from the outside. By the way, 
It's not easy also. It was not easy. There is nothing which is hard on this ass. At the same time, there is nothing which is simple on this ass. If you're also not simple. It becomes hard if you're also a hard person. If you don't want to be organized. So, let's embark on the algebra also now. Now, under algebra, it has got very many parts. How to simplify the equations, collection of like terms, substitution, what we call replacement. We have what we call solving of the equations, finding the unknown, and the others. Is that okay? There are many. So, let's start with the... Let's start with the under algebra. Let's start with the simplifying of the equation. Simplify, for example, this one. Simplify 4m plus 3m. <laughs> See, then you find that, for example, they are brought in an exam. The teacher has set for you as your maybe your homework, your assignment, your work they're supposed to do, maybe your test or end of term. It will depend. Or end of month or after a fortnight. You have found this question there. How do you tackle such questions? Mm -hmm. eh? yeah. Yes, even though you are in primary three, you can also tell us here what to do. Now you're the one of primary four, you know. Algebra begins from, if I'm to say, from primary one. Majorly, if you talk about primary one up to primary seven. Starts from primary one. Algebra. Yes, even what we have just covered. Length, mass, and capacity. Starts from there. So the mathematics just keeps on repeating the topics. But don't that we keep on adding from class to class. Since you have moved from P1 to primary 2, we just add in something on top of what you covered in the previous class. So that's what I'm going to do here now. How are you going to simplify 4M plus 3M? Very simple. Uh -huh. Even there involves collection of like terms. If you don't know. If you know they have the same letter. Like terms have the same mm -hmm. term or oh, the same letter, for example. Or oh, if they are figures, the same. They are just digits. If they are letters, the letters are there also. So here we have here 4M and 3M. This one is M, then also is M. So we can add them together to get a single term. You know, to write in the short. Now, here we are going to first add 4 and 3. Since we are adding, we have to add 4 and 3. Then we go with the same letter with the M. So 4 plus 3, we must add. Then you put just M. Add 4 plus 3. What do you get? It is a 7. Then you bring your term, your M. There. There are those ones who always see just add 4 plus 3. Then you stop there. They not give you to add 4 plus 3 as why you have done that is a 7. No. This one is 4M plus 3M. They are having letter M. So... You have to add 4 plus 3. You know you are adding the digits around 4 and 3, the numbers, plus that M. Because all we're having letter M. So at the end, it becomes 7M. Because you are, uh, you are adding. Good. Uh -huh. They can again ask you that here, that the second number, that collect like terms and simplify. Collect like terms. And do what? And simplify. Yes, you are supposed to collect the like terms and you simplify. We have two y. Oh, you can use three y. Let's start with three y plus two x minus y plus four x. Good number. Hey, collect like terms and simplify. Collect like terms and simplify. Three y. Plus 2x minus y plus 4x. Hey, that involves collection of like terms. You see, there are those students who like putting equal signs anyhow. Good. We have now reached here algebra. Hey, if the number is not solved, please, why do you bring your equal signs? We shall see what we call equation. So, here we are in simplifying of the equations first. Hmm? So, simplify this. Collect like terms and you simplify. So let's first repeat and rewrite re write 3y plus 2x minus 4. Let's first start minus y, then plus 4x. The number is 3y plus 2x minus y plus 4x. We're supposed to collect like terms and simplify. So here involves collection of like terms. Collecting like terms first must take place. Collecting like terms. What are unlike terms? Unlike terms, they are not the same. 
in the short. They're different. A boy and a girl, they will never become the same. They are all human beings, yes, but God created them differently. Hey, you should be aware of that. So letter X and letter Y, they will never become one letter, please. They will never become one term. You should be aware of that. So Y and X, they are different letters. That's why they are called unlike terms. But if it's only M, M, X, X, Y, Y, those ones I would call like terms. So let's collect like terms here. Collecting like terms, we have your serial Y. Mm -hmm. What's another Y? Yes. How do you collect them? Uh -huh. We have here minus Y. Not Y, but minus Y. And it's not even plus Y, but it's minus Y. So 3Y minus Y. See the Y? The Y is a negative. It is a minus. It is having a subtraction sign. That's what we call a minus sign. Subtraction sign. Minus sign. A negative. Hey, when, those ones of primary four. When reach primary five, very well. Hey, they will teach what's called integers. And you will bubble a well. And they are very simple. So, 3y minus y. The y's are over. Now we can put them in brackets. This one called collecting. Now we are now collecting. Uh -huh. We come back now to x plus. Plus these two x first of all. We, where's the x? Oh, they are over. No. They are still there. Which one? It's the general of plus 4x. Plus 4x. Then also you see. 2x plus 4x we put in the bra in the brackets to differentiate. So this is the step we call that a collection of like terms. Collecting like terms well. Teacher, if you do that, by the way, learners outside there, if you do that, the way the teacher will smile with the answer that yes, the working have shown well. Hey, this is what we call the working. Now you're not showing the steps, your steps, how now the answer is going to come. So collect them. So what is 3y minus y? By the when we say y, it means the one y. Instead of saying boy, you can even say one boy. One boy is the, the same as boy. Y is the same as saying one y. But you see, for us, we don't like putting there one. When is the term is just one, it's just one. Two, two, three, three. So y is the same as saying one y. So 3y minus one y, what is the balance? Automatically, we say that is 2y. Good. Plus, what is 2x plus 4x? First of all, 2 plus 4, it is a 6. Then, which time I going to bring the letter? It is x. And it becomes 2y plus 6x. Not a plus 6, but a plus 6x. If you leave that letter y, instead of saying 2y plus 6x, and you say that is a y plus 6, or 2 plus 6, again, you're failing. Why? You are leaving out the letter they gave you. Don't leave out anything out. If the number was having that, or if the question was having that, go with it when you are showing you are working. Up the step of get the answer. Don't put it off. You remove it, the teacher will mark your answer wrong. Because you have not done what you are supposed to do. So, 2y plus 6x. Now, here. <laughs> their children, I'm telling you, the way they can add and say 2y plus 6x, then they add and say 8xy. <laughs> you just make the teacher to first laugh before even he marks your book. Eh? Oh, your paper. So, these are unlike terms. So, with the unlike terms, we cannot mix them together. So, it ends there. That's the answer. The answer is 2y plus 6x. If not, 6x plus 2y. They are what call unlike terms. So these ones are unlike terms. These ones are like terms. Number one, like terms. Number two, unlike terms. They are not the same. I hope you now you have seen the difference between the two. Good. So algebra is moving on. So collection of like terms, or what we call simplifying of the equations, it ends here. there. Now. Let's also first tackle something concerning substitution. You know what's called substitution? Substitution means replacement. To substitute is the same as saying to replace. To replace, to substitute. To substitute, to replace. Replace, substitute. So let's talk about substitution. So the word substitution is the same as replace. Good. Ah, yeah. So let's go on here. Eh? Substitute. Given, given that A, they gave us to be 2, comma, B is 3, 
and C is 4. Okay? C is what? C is 4. Now find the value, find the value of a part of the equation. A plus B plus C. Good. My children of primary 4, primary 5, and primary 6. That's what we call substitution, replacement. So, collecting like terms and simplifying them, we are done. Whether they are of the same term or they are unlike. Unlike and like terms, they will never become the same. When you are a boy, you remain as a boy and die as a boy. When you are a girl, the same story. Is that okay? So, don't mix them together. Here, children always go ahead and add here and they get that it is two of that. I don't know what I would say. Six X. Oh, I don't know. Eh? Two Y. Eh? You see? So those are all wrong answers. So that just remains to be two Y plus six X. Even though you begin with six X plus two Y, they are all positives. There's no term there with a the negative. So two Y plus six X is the same as saying six X plus two Y. Good. Now let's go and substitute. To substitute means to replace. Substitution is the same as saying replace replacement good now where you are supposed to ex I, let me tell you something concerning substitution that you need to be aware he? what is it teacher tell us <laughs> now be attentive and listen always when you are substituting or when you are replacing eh? you know what they're supposed to do if you are supposed to expand, I hope they told you to call expanding numbers. Hey, hey, good. In value form. Good. So even here we shall be, if the letters are together, we shall expand where necessary. Where you are supposed to expand where necessary, you expand. That's what substitution wants or replacement. Where you are not supposed to expand, don't expand. Just go and substitute direct. Where you are supposed to expand, you first expand before you go and substitute. I hope you heard that statement. Expand where necessary. When in substitution. When I suppose expand, don't expand. Now here, do we need to expand here? A plus B plus C it is already expanded in value form. So we just go and just substitute. <laughs> we move on. That's what we're supposed to do there. So instead of going letter A, we shall now go with the number, the digit, the figure they gave us for that letter A. The same story to B, and likewise to. Let us see. So A, what was A? So A plus B plus C. Substitution is going on. Replacement. What is A? A they gave us two. You put two. Below A, plus. And you are adding. What are adding? Why in plus? Why in addition? Plus. Uh -huh. Plus what? What is B? Uh -huh. What is the figure for B there? Three. Good. Plus C. Uh -huh. What is the C? Four. Okay. We're moving on. Good. So now they are going to add. Don't add the letters and say that A, B, C. <laughs> You're supposed to add the figures, not the letters. Now again, you find some children who say A plus B plus C equals A, B, C. <laughs> no, please, learners, be organized. <laughs> now, have you used the two? Have you used the three and the four? You have not used. Now, why do you mix letters together again? When you're adding, it is addition. So that's all. So substitute. A is two. Plus B, 3, plus C, 4. So when you add all, it will give you what? I hope you will say that is a 9. Good. If you want, you can first add 2 plus 3 to give you 5. 5 plus 4, automatically, it will give you 9. So this is called substitution. You have just substituted direct, Andy. You have got the answer. Now, be part of that equation is to find out what you want. A, B, C. I hope you are still in the nursery section, OP1. Teachers could tell you the madams down there. You see those lower classes there. We like putting their madams. They're the ones who can do well with the children. Even these male teachers like me. I can also teach there. <laughs> yes. Because if you are meant to be a teacher, you have to teach all the classes. Okay? Like now in this COVID situation. Eh? Those ones of who used to teach P2, P3, P4, they are also teaching right now candid classes. Those of primary seven years because for us teachers even in the future if you become a teacher the moment you come out from college that yes you are now a trained person trained teacher who has the skills the values and the knowledge please you have to be ready to teach any class that they can put you <laughs> so love teaching please okay 
Yes, that's what I advise you. So, back to this point. A, B, C. What is the meaning of A, B, C? A, B, C. You see the letters are together. Now, that is going to force us to first expand. So, how are you going to expand A, B, C? To expand A, B, C, it will be A, B, C first. How are we going to expand? We are going to expand through multiplying. A, B means A times B. B, C means times again C. A, B, C. A times B times C. You, if the letters are together, if the letters are together, we are going to expand by putting a multiplication sign in between the letters. Is that okay? So A, now we are going to substitute because our face will expand. A, 2. Times B, 3. Times C. Times C. Times C. Times C. What is time is C? C is what? 4. So A, 2. Times B, 3. Times C, 4. Multiplication. First multiply A and B. What is it? 2 times 3, 6. Times 4. For C. 2 times 3 it gives you 6. 2 times 3 means 2 groups of 3s. Is that okay? So 2 times 3, if you have your 2 groups of 3s. So you find that now you get 6. Times 4. Now here, 6 times 4. What is the meaning of 6 times 4? 6 times 4 means 6 groups of 4s. 6 groups of 4s. So at the end, when you get your 6 groups of 4s, it will give you 24. Hey, that's also your assignment. Hey, you're going to form for me 6 groups of 4s. Draw. Draw. 4 balls. Put there one group. 4 balls. A group. A group of 4 balls. Four balls, four balls, four balls. So six times four, six groups of fours. So you're going to have six groups. And each group should go with the four balls. If not even chairs, whatever you will draw. So here in number one or A part, we are to first substitute direct. But in this second one of B part, we forced us to first expand. We are to first expand before substitution took place. So A, B, C, it doesn't mean that you are supposed to add A plus B plus C. No. A plus B plus C, it is just a one of A part. But this one is A, B, C, which will first tell us to first do what? To first expand before we substitute. That's what I told you at the first Please first expand where necessary before you go and substitute. Is that okay? Hey, before you substitute, have you done expansion first of all where necessary? So that's what we did here and we got the answer so let's go again for a commercial break a short one and we shall be back stay tuned don't go away yeah welcome back from that short commercial break we are still continuing the hour to some program here at delta tv still mathematics is going on before we went for a break we we're in this substitution or replacement i told her the police that why you're supposed to expand? Always when you're in substitution, expand. Why you're not supposed to expand? Don't expand. Like here in A part, no in expansion there. Now in this B part, we have to expand fast before we went and substituted or before we went and eh, replaced. That's concerning substitution. Always please store that. Now, you are now in what we call solving of equations. Algebra is still going on. This is, you see, algebra is wide. And you find in those classes of primary 1 up to primary 7, you find that they put it to be the last topic. Hey, your teachers, I think, will even update you, and I think they told you. You find algebra is the last topic. Then the first one is the sets, set concept. <laughs> Knowledge about sets. Here, algebra concludes now the, the, what? the syllabus that the teacher is supposed to cover in that classroom. Okay? Hey, so here we're not any solving of equations. You see, we are only in equations. What is an equation? An equation always involves equal signs. Equal signs. For them, it takes this. Eh? The equal sign. There's a way, there's a local say that I always have with the children when I'm outside there with them. It is equal side. <laughs> I just bring the word kiss kiss. Now they say kiss kiss means what? It means an equal sign. This that is now just in my local say. Eh? Botanical eh? word for equal side. <laughs> okay. So with the unequal sign, 
we always put in an equation so as to balance the two sides to show that the two expressions are equal they have the same value now for you that's why I find here in the substitution i not put the equal signs except in this number in the equation itself a is equal to do, to b or a is equal to 2 to show that yes they are two they are the same so even though they put a is equal to b yes what is on the left should be equal to what's on the right that's why we put the equal sign always in an equa equation to balance the two sides to make the two sides to give us the same value or to balance them to balance eh? Eh, you know what's called how to balance things left and right they should just be the same now for you you like putting equal size anyhow like here before someone say two plus three plus four nine equals nine what is it equal to nine if there is nothing you're putting on the left don't put that equal sign like here me i'll put here n plus seven on the left n plus seven is on the left equals 13 on the right do you know the reason that's why i put there the equal sign to balance my two expressions to make them to be the same now with all we see algebra when you're solving equations this is plus sign it goes with the which sign it goes with subtraction that operation of a plus and addition they are together they move <laughs> they move together hey, they move together also with algebra when you are dividing it goes for multiplication <laughs> algebra still working on there those two also they are married <laughs> if i subtraction addition they are married multiplication and division with algebra they are also married hey they are all the same so now when you're solving sometimes instead of saying n plus 7 equals 13 they can put a box where does that n this n here they can put it with a box they can replace that n with a box so be about the same story get the missing number that is supposed to put in that box so here there was a missing number that we were supposed to put here so when you add that number plus seven should give you 13 so you have to show the work not just so hard and say hey, yes i know the answer the answer is six no 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 how did you get show us the working how you got that six of yours so how are you going to solve n plus seven with the algebra i told you addition and subtraction they move together so when you are at the opposite of plus seven is minus seven so when this plus seven crosses the other side of the equal sign it becomes a negative Hey, not multiplication, not addition, but a negative. So n plus seven also minus seven because you are removing the opposite of plus seven is minus seven is equal to side also thirteen minus seven. Sub substitute. So in short, we are substituting this seven on both sides. So plus seven minus seven is equal to thirteen also minus seven. So now here n is going to remain that known. This one is unknown. We don't know the meaning of that n but we're supposed to get that n so now here n is going to remain this is plus seven and minus seven they have gone away and you are going to make with the letter n is equal to 13 minus seven what is 13 if you have your 13 mangoes and seven are rotten how many are going to be good yes six good so n equals six so you can see then you underline and again here you should arrange their work vertically downwards the way some of you can just put the equal sign is equals, equals, equal. Just anyhow. Ah, ah. They should be arranged vertically downwards, flowing. You see, mine. They are not like this that equals, equals, equal. Now, which one was the first equal sign and which one was the last equal sign? So you need to be organized. Be organized. Make those things to run vertically downwards. So that's the answer for that. So with the Addition goes with subtraction. Now they can even ask you the next number that they may be solve. Solve. Then they put a box. <laughs> oh, find the unknown. Eh? Find the unknown. Find the missing number. Fill in the missing number. Fill in the missing number in this one. A box time is equal to 12. Yeah, 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 yeah. The way you're going to run. I missed here. Then you say, eh, hey, a box, what is a box? No, no, no. This is algebra. Fill in the missing number. Which number are you going to put here? 
So when you multiply it by three, it gives you 12 off. Technique, yes. You should also first know how to brainstorm yourself. This one just calls for algebra. Very simple. That's what we did in this number four. The same story. So with the modification, it goes with the division, full stop. No comma. So what are supposed to do? So here, a box. Mm -hmm. We're not going to put your letter. Don't bring your X, your Y. No. That box, go with the box like, like that. Even though you say let that box be Y, it's okay. But why don't you maintain the box? So a box times three should give you 12 off. Hey, fill in the missing number. You, the student of primary four, primary five. I'm telling you, there's no way you will see a maths paper without algebra. I'm assuring you. Me, I know it. Even though I'm not the one who's going to say it, but I know what teachers said. I am assuring you now. Well, look at me, which means just look at the papers. Because when we come here, we mean it. business of who? giving you what sincerely you will happen to find, which need the same working. So there is no way you tell me sincerely these types of numbers are not there in the primary four. There is no way you deceive me. And unless if you are just at home all the years in your life, you don't go back or you don't go to class. Those ones of, of who, who are still brain, being breastfed, those ones, they don't know. But for you always who goes to class, but not now. You the one always who's in the classroom. You will happen to see these things coming. Algebra. Algebra. P5, P6, P4. These numbers, P3, P6, P7. They are there. So what are you going to do when you happen to find a saying, fill in a missing number? Then you just go and put the answer. Hey, this one. How did you get it? You now see here algebra. You need to show how you got the answer. Put the working there. Without the working, they don't know what you're doing. I am telling you very well, and I'm coughing to inform that, please. That's what I told that, please. Be attentive. Be a good listener. See. And just listen. Full stop. So a box times three equals 12. What are you going to do? I'm going to solve. I told that with the multiplication, it goes with division. Addition, it goes with subtraction, with algebra, that is all, nothing else apart from that. So a box times three. What is the opposite of times three? Divided by three. Good. Because it goes good. Division. Equals. So when you have divided this side, the other side also you are going to divide. 12 of divided by three. Good. Divide this side, divide the other side. Subtract this side, subtract the other side. Substitute. Hmm. Take. Times three. Divide by three. Mm, minus seven plus seven. Plus seven minus seven. On both sides. If this side is having a plus, the other side a minus. If this side is having a multiplication sign, the other side a division sign. That's how algebra goes. And get the answers. So a box. So times three divided by three it just gives you one. Which just the a box. Equals. Now here, what is the 12 of divided by three? Uh, divide. You have your 12 oranges. 12 oranges should be divided among three girls. How many girl, how many mangoes will each girl get? Get, get? Yes, I know you're telling me four. Yes, good. So 12 divided by three, it will give you four. Good. So that box is supposed to put the four. <laughs> the, one, the one you told me at first that is a four. Without showing me the working. So that's what I'm supposed to do. Show the working before your answer is accepted. Without the working, we don't know what you are doing, even though you are in primary four. Don't just go and put the answer there. Twice. Without showing us how you got that answer. For us, we start marking from the working of shown before we accept your answer, whether it's correct or is wrong. Oh. Hey. Follow that. Follow that. Follow the steps. Equal signs must be arranged vertically while in equation. Making the two sides to be equal. Balancing. Two, ex two expressions, left and right. We have here the next number. <laughs> Very technical also. Number five. Find the unknown. They can say find the unknown. Find the unknown. Find the unknown. <laughs> then again, yeah, go and tell me stories. Eh? Find the unknown. Then they put here, for example, a box. Hmm? A box. Out of three is equal to eight. <laughs> you see, look at how they have given you here. I'm telling you, 
these examiners have them these teachers these teachers those teachers i call them to be examiners because they're also examining you who else again examines a child at school or a learner at school is the teacher so me i generalize them i call them the examiners now for you call the examiners are the ones who mark your name no even the one who marks your paper Who's going to mark your book? Who's going to mark your assignment, your homework? That one's an examiner. All the teachers are examiners. Yes. Because you cannot give a child work and you expect someone else to mark. It is you to mark and you are going to call to be the examiner. Hmm. Hmm. That's again another name for teachers. <laughs> yes. So that's why I like being a teacher. So you should also love, love that. Okay. And even though you hate right now that you hate teaching. Time is coming, you will love it. So, find the unknown. A box divided by three equals eight. This word out of means divided by. So, this is another way of writing it. A box divided by three equals eight. Hey! That out of this, see this one here, this line. It means out of, divided by. To divide, a box divided by three equals eight. How do you solve such numbers? <laughs> Again, it's simple. What are you going to do? Again, we're going to bring our expressions there. The signs, operations, division, and multiplication should move together. Addition and subtraction also should work together. Eh? Yes, they should move together. Now, if they don't move, if they don't move together, problems. So, what is a box divided by three equals eight? So here, a box. Divided by three. The opposite of division with algebra is times multiplication. So a box divided by three times three equals here also eight times three. You take its opposite on the right. Don't take the very sign which was on the left to take on the right. You will fail. Please, learners outside there. When you, are, you always send me numbers about solving, you see how I used to solve. Now again, I've come here again, I've helped you now the more. So, for those ones whose first time is to see me solving these numbers and even explaining them, I hope you are gaining and you are gaining and you are moving forward, not backwards. So, a box divided by three equals eight. How are you going to solve such a number? With the division, it goes with multiplication with algebra. A box divided by three, the opposite of division is times with the algebra equals eight times three. I want to fast talk with algebra. Why? I'm in algebra. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. With algebra. So a box remains here alone, hanging, waiting for a number to be placed in that box. <laughs> Equals. Higher. These ones will die automatically. But we don't show that they are dying. Just get the balance here. Get the balance the other side. That's how we do. Don't get the balance here and leave the other one without getting the balance. No. Balance this side. Balance the other side. They should be moving together. Together. So, what is now 8 times 3? Yeah. 8 groups of series. At first, we were multiplying numbers. Again, here, we have reached multiplication of numbers. What is 8 times 3? 8 groups of series. Draw 8 groups. Bring 8 groups. Uh -huh. At the end, we give 21, 24. Then you underline. So, that box is supposed to have 24. So, when you divide 24 by 3, it will give you 8. Full stop. Even though you don't put for me a full stop here in mathematics, I mind less. For us, we have only that word full stop as a decimal, decimal point. Mm. But here, you don't, you don't put your full stops. They are meaningless. But in English, hello, they are meaningful. Ah, yeah. So that's supposed to do with the algebra. Algebra, algebra, when you're solving those equations. Now, there's a last number, one first. Talk about still algebra, algebra before we call, we conclude. So they can give a number like this and solve, solve. 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. You're supposed to solve that number. Now, even here, the same story. So 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. Left should be equal to right. How do you solve such numbers? Very simple also. Just be a good listener and listen and see. So always, before you tackle this 2x, this 
two and x. These two and x they are together as two x plus three equals eleven. So what they are going to do here is to first remove this plus three from this left hand side, and because the other side, so you only remain here with two x alone. So how are you going to solve this number? Is by like like this two x plus three. The opposite of plus three, I told that is minus what? Minus three, good. Is equal to 11 minus three. That's what we call substituting three from both sides. Removing. Eh? Plus three, minus three. Minus three, plus three. Minus seven, plus seven. Minus seven, plus seven. Plus eight, minus eight. So the opposite, the move. So that's how you remove it. So here the balance will be 2x, not a x. 2x, they're together, is equal to this side. Now what is 11 minus 3? It will give you what? It will give you 8. Good. So 11 mangoes minus 3 bad ones. The balance will be 8 good ones. So 11 minus 3, it will give you what? 8. You just count 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Remove three. One, two, three. Count the balance. Count this balance here. How many are they? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's what we call 11 minus eight. Simple mathematics of P1, P2. Mm -hmm. So using the counter. So 2x equals eight. Now here, here. What are you going to do here? What are you going to do here is now to divide both sides by two. So as to find the value of that x. Is that okay? So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 here. Divide both sides by 2. 2x two must be divided by 2. Equal this side also. 8 must be divided by 2. You divide, that's called dividing both sides by what? By 2. Dividing both sides by what? By 2. Is that okay? So this 2 when divide 2 by 2, it will give you 1. So by 2 ones. By 2 ones. Now here, by 2 ones. What is 8 divided by 2? It will give you what? If you have your eight mangoes and your two girls, each girl will get how many mangoes? Four, four. So X will give us automatically what? Four. That is the value of what? Of X. So that's how you solve such numbers. That's how we solve such equations. Is that okay? So this still algebra. So these are what we call equations. Solving equations. So those are of primary five, primary six, and primary four, you are moving forward. And I told her first that please, there is no way your teacher will give you a full mathematics paper without algebra equations being there. There are very many. We have parts, we have lessons with algebra, very many of them, but I have not finished all. But I've finished what I wanted. But it's why we can even talk up to even 4 p.m. today if you want us to talk. But that time is not there. I don't have that time. <laughs> but next time we, sh we can talk about it. Don't worry. Yeah. Or even when you WhatsApp me, we can chat and we do more. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm supposed to do when you're solving e algebra equations. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. so, so as I conclude, first of all, my lesson, mm -hmm. allow me mm -hmm. give you some work that will keep you busy mm -hmm. to show that sincerely I've also been following mm -hmm. what the teacher has been talking on the church. Huh? On the chalkboard, me I call it this one chalkboard because for us when we are in the classroom, we are with the chalkboard. Hey, so this one is my board, okay? okay. If you know it's white, but I can call it the white board, hey. or oh, chalkboard, or oh, marker board, okay? <laughs> so any, so I hope you organized. So let's have some work first for us so to keep ourselves busy at home, but remember to present the work for marking, hey can present either to I through WhatsApp or can refer to other colleagues. And uh, those are teachers like me. So can the nearby, I know where you are, there are teachers within. So you can invite him and but make sure the distance is maintained. So this is what called homework for you. Few numbers just. One is to simplify. x plus 6 plus 2x plus 3. 2 is to simplify still. Simple.
7x plus 8y minus 5x plus 2y. We saw the same number solve. Solve. P minus 6 is equal to 10. 4. Change. Change 4 kilometers as meters. As what? As meters. 5. Express. Three thousand five hundred grams in two kilograms. In two what? Kilograms. In two kilograms. Changing from grams to kilograms. Then six, the last number. You have to now to find the unknown. Find the unknown. Find the what? The unknown. Find the unknown. Find the unknown y out of. 4 is equal to 6. Hey, those are the numbers that I've left you with. So, they have summarized what we have talked today. Is that okay? They have summarized what we have discussed to today. So, actually, there are some people who always ask me about my lines very well via others. So, if you want my MTN number, which is on WhatsApp, it is 0787. Four seven nine eight nine zero. I repeat zero seven eight seven four seven nine eight nine zero. That is on WhatsApp. Then even mobile, the one you can use for calling. Even that one you can call me. There is no problem. Airtel is zero seven five two five seven thirteen fourteen. Zero seven five two. 5, 7, 13, 14. Then we shall talk more. We shall discuss a lot about mathematics of primary. Is that okay? So I wish you an organized week as we have just we began it yesterday. So stay home. Stay safe. May God bless you. Stay tuned to other programs being broadcasted here at Delta TV. Don't move away. I'm off. Bye-bye.